Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk a little bit about the languages that are most likely going to be used for WebAssembly. So let's get into it. Now this is of course highly subjective, there is no way to definitively know this, but I have a few thoughts on this. The thing is that the lists that I've been presented with, with different people I've talked to who are saying that this should be, the, is probably going to be the thing that most people are going to use for WebAssembly and so forth. I just want to walk you through some of the languages and my thoughts on it. And these, this is not like the most inclusive list in the world, of course. It's just my very subjective opinion and thought on what hap is going to happen next. So enough dilly-dallying. So the first and foremost thing that I will argue is that at this point in time it's still a bit early to determine whether or not WebAssembly is even going to be a thing. I think it is. I, I'm pretty sure that the main three technologies that you are going to see rise to be almost standard practice within the next five years is going to be CSS Grid, service workers and WebAssembly. I, I'm just saying that I think that these things are immensely powerful and they represent a potential mass revolutionary change to the web platform. And when it comes to WebAssembly, I think that the best candidate at this point in time is Rust. And I don't see any anyone who even remotely capable of competing with Rust for WebAssembly. It's just not happening. Well, I will have made other videos where I will argue that Rust versus C++ is a battle that C++ is going to win because of the massive amounts of code that is already invested into C++ as a platform. Now, Mozilla is rewriting some of their browser code, like they're creating a project called Servo. You should absolutely check it out. It's groundbreaking ideas that are happening there, and I'm very excited about it. But it's still like for the industry, it's a different thing because you need success stories. And I think that this is something that Mozilla is very, very aware of. I think that the reason why they want to get close into WebAssembly is because they know that whatever, like the most amount of developers in the world are web developers. Like that's the largest amount of developers you will ever find. Systems developers are absolutely a big, a big amount of developers and mobile developers, but they are dwarfed in comparison to the people who work on the web. Most of, IT business happens on the web platform. They know this and it's, I mean, it's Mozilla, they have a browser, like that's their, that's their core. So Rust, which is perfect for system levels development and is, I mean, I'm, I, I'm just gonna say it, I love it immensely. It's an amazing experience for me who's like kind of trying to learn more system de systems development and getting more into the low level underlying mechanics of software development. I mean, it's a great experience and that is extremely powerful. So they don't have right now, most, in my opinion, personal opinion, a strong enough use case. They don't have enough success stories to prove to the people who are already really deep, deeply invested in C++ that Rust is the thing that they should use, they should mi that the migration should happen. But with WebAssembly, they, they're starting from scratch. WebAssembly hasn't really been associated with a certain language like for 3d games development it's like fairly standard practice it's fairly associated with c++ but WebAssembly is still it's up for grabs and rust is grabbing that i'm pretty sure that they're going to do that and what's interesting about that is that there's really nobody who can compete with them as it is today WebAssembly doesn't support garbage collection. That rules out like almost all of the other languages, like Java, is, uh, Java, C Sharp, like all of those languages that like, you can just throw that away because at this moment in time, they can't, they couldn't do WebAssembly if they wanted to. But it's uh, coming up and you can bet your ass on that the same moment WebAssembly, the WebAssembly standard allows for garbage collection, they are, I'm pretty, pretty sure that they're already writing code for it. I'm pretty sure that they are because the thing is, if uh, it, it, I, I think that what's going to happen is that Rust is going to grab the throne of WebAssembly and everybody else is going to try to prove that they can do it too. I'm 100% I'm sure that that is happening. And Go is already doing it. Go is extremely good for a lot of things, but I think that when it comes to this type of programming, Rust beats it every day of the week. It's not, in my opinion, it's not even a competition. But 
the other languages are going to face off against it. But what I mean, what 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 I find interesting is, I don't think that there's anybody right now who can compete with WebAssembly. Oh, sorry, with Rust for the throne of WebAssembly. But what I think is interesting is that there is a candidate that nobody's really talking about that I would think could be an interesting challenge. Now, it's still, or as I said, there's no garbage collection, so one, it has to happen once that's there. But I'm pretty sure that the strongest, one of the strongest cases for WebAssembly development that is not Rust would be TypeScript. Let me, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Just let me walk you through it. So, the w main reason why Node.js became such a massive success is that it's all JavaScript. JavaScript is the language of the browser. Almost every single, I would say every single web developer knows JavaScript. And doing that server side, I mean, there's a, gre there's a massive benefit to having one universal language, guys. It, it's a massive, massive benefit for business, for, for, for a lot of people. And just consider, like, because ASMJS, which was the original prototype for that's, that is now like what we call WebAssembly, it was done using a pseudo language, a typed pseudo language on top of JavaScript. And I mean, TypeScript is a million times better at, like, it's, it's a beautiful language. It's amazing to work in. It already has all the things there. All it now really needs in order to be able to compete, in my opinion, with Rust for this throne is to have the garbage collecting and like have support for it. And honestly, I think that th this can be a pretty close call. I don't think Java and the others, I think that they're gonna do what C Sharp and Java do, always do. They are going to give you their version of it and only the really hard called Java and C Sharp people are gonna use it. Like look at uh, the different like libraries that you have and platforms you have for doing mobile development using these languages and you, you, you probably get my drift there. But I think that JavaScript or rather TypeScript has a really strong use case because remember, Rust is a, an amazing system level of language. It's an amazing language overall and I'm very excited to be learning it. But JavaScript is the world's most popular programming language. That's a pretty big thing. Almost everybody who does programming on the web knows JavaScript. So if they can do WebAssembly in JavaScript using TypeScript in order to bridge the gap of, like you had to have the typing system there, that's a, that's a short, for a lot of people, that's a shorter leap to be able to do WebAssembly. And there's a benefit there. Even if Rust would be the sane and smart choice, there's a benefit to having the gap be shorter because the gap between, uh, for, for most people is shorter with JavaScript than it is with Rust. That's at least my thought. And uh, my guess is that Rust is going to be the language of choice for WebAssembly. And I think that the most, the strongest second candidate to this will be either Go or most likely TypeScript. That's at least what I think. Have a great day.